Hello there, my name is David. I'm the marketing director for the cruise line and I've just returned from a preview sailing aboard Region 7 Seas new ship, Seven Seas Splendor. So to start with, we're going to take a look at some of the public spaces on Seven Seas Splendor. Starting in the atrium, where you will find the Grand Staircase, you'll also find boutiques, the Compass Rose Restaurant, Destination Services, and the Splendor Lounge. The centerpiece here is obviously this magnificent chandelier, which is visible from both Deck 4 and 5. Moving on, we have the Constellation Theatre, which is accessible from decks 4 and 5. This serves as the entertainment hub of the ship. Um, in the evenings, there'll be musical performances, Broadway-style shows, and throughout the day, it's also where you will find a lot of the onboard lectures taking place. As you can see from this video, the sight lines throughout the auditorium are fantastic, and the seats are configured as either single or doubles. Also on deck 4 you will find the Splendor Lounge. This is an alternative evening venue to the Constellation Theatre and it's also a popular night spot after dinner. Here you can enjoy live music from bands, um, there's loads of comfortable seats and there's an excellent menu of drinks. Staying on deck 4 you will find Seven Seas Splendor's Casino. Said to be inspired by the gaming halls of Las Vegas and Monte Carlo, here you can enjoy games of poker, blackjack and roulette. So now we're up on deck 11 of Seven Seas Splendor which is the pool deck. Here you will find obviously a pool but also two jacuzzis, um, lots of comfortable sun loungers, there's a bar, shower facilities and also you have access here to the pool grill and if you were to carry on further down to the right you would also find the veranda. So now we're up on deck 12, which is the ship's sports deck. As you can see, there's also some seats up here, which when the weather's nice, as it was in Livorno this day, uh, is an excellent place to sit out in the sun. Moving further along, we'll find where the ship's sports equipment are. And here there is a shuffleboard, there's a driving range, and also there is space should you wish to embark on a little jog during your cruise. Staying on deck 11, you will find the observation lounge on Seven Seas Splendor. As you can see, the lounge's position at the front of the ship means that the lounge benefits from fantastic panoramic views when at sea or in port. The observation lounge also makes for a great spot for meeting friends or for enjoying some quiet time with a good book. At night, the atmosphere changes, the lights are dimmed, and guests are free to congregate here for pre- and post-dinner drinks while being serenaded by the ship's resident pianist. Now we're going to take a look at some of the restaurants on Seven Seas Splendor. We're going to start on deck 5 with Pacific Rim, which is the ship's pan-Asian speciality restaurant. Upon approaching the restaurant, you're greeted by this somewhat magnificent dragon, and that really sets the tone for the type of dining experience you can hope to enjoy here. To complement the stunning decor and muted lighting in Pacific Rim, Regions chefs have created a mouth-watering menu packed with a variety of flavours. Here you can enjoy everything from Peking duck salad to Korean-style barbecue lamb chops and gigantic Pink King Tiger Prawns. Also, as you can see, like nearly all of Seven Seas Splendor, the restaurant is completely wheelchair accessible.
So on deck 10 is where you will find what is perhaps my favourite dining venue on 7C Splendour and that is Prime 7. Now I've been a fan of Prime 7 ever since I cruised on 7C's Mariner back in 2015. But I have to be honest, I think this version of Prime 7 actually improves upon the experience I enjoyed on Mariner back then. If you're not really familiar with the concept of Prime 7, it's kind of a high-end US steakhouse style menu, so you can expect lots of grilled meats, lots of fish, and some excellently paired wines. So during the evenings, Deck 11's La Veranda is transformed into a casual Italian dining restaurant called Seto Mari. Now the menu here is kind of as you would expect, so it's lots of pasta, seafood and of course some incredible desserts. So now we're going to take a look at some of the sweets on 7 C Splendour. Um, now the suite I was staying in was actually a Splendour suite, so if you'd like to see a full video of that just click the link above. Otherwise we're going to head to Deck 6 and to the ship's entry level accommodation which is the Veranda Suite. So the Veranda Suite is located on decks 6 and 7. It's 20 metres squared with an 8 metres squared balcony. Now, like all of the accommodation options on 7 Sea Splendour, you do have your own private balcony, and there is also an ensuite bathroom. Um, with the Veranda Suite, though, you get a glass enclosed shower instead of a bathtub, so that's possibly worth bearing in mind if you were expecting to have a bath on your cruise. So now we're going to head into a concierge suite. Now this is a Model E concierge suite which is found on decks 6, 7, 8 and 9. It's slightly larger than the veranda suite, so the suite size is about 30.8 metres squared and the balcony size ranges from 12.2 to 10.6 metres squared. Now the advantages of having a concierge suite over the standard veranda suite is that on selected sailings you will benefit from a free one night pre-cruise hotel package and also unlike the veranda suite the bathroom in the concierge suite also comes with a separate bathtub and a stand up shower. So this is a superior suite on deck 8, you'll also find them on decks 7 and 9. Uh, the suite size is approximately the same as the concierge level suite. Um, the balcony size is slightly smaller though, coming in at around 10.6 meters squared. Now as you can see this suite has been configured with the twin beds, um, which is an option on all of the suites we've seen so far on 7C Splendour. So now we're going to head to a penthouse suite. This particular penthouse suite is on deck 9, but you'll also find them on decks 10, 12 and 14. Um, much larger living space in the penthouse suite, coming in at 41.6 metres squared, and the balcony sizes range from 10.3 to 16.3 metres squared. Unlike the other suites we've seen so far, the penthouse suite has a separate bedroom and living room, and unlike Seven Seas Explorer, whereby you could only access the bathroom via a door through the walk-in wardrobe, they've kind of redesigned this on Seven Seas Splendour, and now there is a door from the bedroom into the bathroom. Like the concierge suites, booking a penthouse suite means you also benefit from the free one night pre-cruise hotel package and a penthouse suite also comes with a personal butler as well. So now we come to the final suite we filmed on 7C Splendour and this is a Splendour suite and this is actually my suite which was on deck 10 but you'll also find them on decks 9 and 12. Now this is quite a large suite so it comes in at 59.8 meters squared and a balcony size that ranges from 15.4 to 24.4 meters squared. Like the penthouse suite you have the separate bedroom and separate living room and you have an extremely large bathroom in the Splendour suite which has a bath complete with a jacuzzi function and a rainforest shower. 
Now, you also get the butler in the Splendor Suite and you also have the free one night hotel package when you book a voyage in this suite. So that concludes our ship tour of Seven Seas Splendor. If you'd like to find out more, please visit our website at www.cruiseline.co.uk or give us a call on 0800 852 7408.